Hi, everybody. We have a great book today. It's called Larry Gets Lost in Chicago. It is about the city, which is the opposite of rural, right? A city is an urban place. There's lots of buildings, lots of people, lots of cars, but a rural area is the opposite of that. Not a lot of buildings, not a lot of cars, lots of land. Farms are examples of rural areas. So let's read Larry Gets Lost in Chicago. Think about the opposites in the rural areas. Nice job. Larry Gets Lost in Chicago by Michael Mullen and John Skewers. That's right. They are the authors. We'll take off the jacket that protects our book. Look at that. Yeah, that's the skyline. All right. This is Larry. This is Pete. They rode on a train, each one in his seat. Filled with excitement, they both wore a grin. A new city adventure was about to begin. Mom and Dad led the way from the big, busy station to the water taxi waiting at a river location. Oh, that's nice. That's on the Chicago River. It says Chicago Water Taxi. And there's the L. Nice job. Oh, you're right. That's not the L. It says Metro. That's the train. The L is the elevated train that goes in the city. Nice job. Through the heart of the city, a river flowed. The water taxi made it seem like a regular road. Under several bridges, Pete and Larry passed. With no red lights, they traveled quite fast. So look at downtown Chicago. That's right, that would be the opposite in a rural area. Not a lot of bridges, not a lot of tall buildings, maybe other than a silo, which is something we will learn about that's on a farm. The family walked for what seemed like a mile. So many shopping bags, so much style. Larry watched a man make hot dogs with all kinds of stuff. With toppings so high, would one bun be enough? Mustard and relish on every one? Tomatoes, peppers, and a seeded bun? Celery salt, but no ketchup, was the final touch. Larry was sure Pete couldn't eat that much. There's Navy Pier. Looking good. Yes, you're right. Maybe the Willis Tower will be in this book. Oh, yeah, that would be the opposite in a rural area, right? There's no Navy Pier. But eat it he did, and Larry's hunger remained. Larry knew not to beg. That was how he was trained. He tried to forget his tummy frustration as the family arrived at a railway station. Larry led them all up. They climbed stair after stair. In this part of town, trains are up in the air. On the platform, they waited a minute or two when one of those hot dogs came into view. Larry pounced on it, happy to finally eat. But in the time that it took... That's right, there's the L. It looks different than the train, you're right. He had lost his friend Pete! Oh no, Pete got on the L without Larry! He tried to make a quick reconnection, but the train he jumped on went in the other direction. They went opposite directions. One train went north and the other train went south. He was soon happy to get out, being packed in so tight. Something big was happening at this round building site. Could one of these people in bright blue caps tell him where he could go to find Pete, perhaps? He took the L to the stadium where the Chicago Cubs play. Oh no, I hope he finds Pete. Pete, Mom, and Dad rode their southbound train past a different stadium with a different name. They saw trains that were big and planes that were small, but their search for Larry turned up nothing at all. Oh no. 
they're at a different stadium where the Chicago White Sox play. But that's right, they're opposites. The Cubs play in one stadium and the Sox play in another. Nice job making the connection. Pete saw a statue of a guy walking on air. Larry loved to play ball, but the pup wasn't there. Larry stood by a lion who lived in a zoo, thinking, thank goodness there's glass between me and Big U. That's right. They're at the Lincoln Park Zoo. And that's Michael Jordan at the United Center, another stadium. Yep, he's a basketball player. That would be the opposite of baseball. He found a lakeshore line and ran on the sand. There were boats in the water and one on the land. He continued his search from way up high. Yep, he's at the beach. I hope they find each other soon. They went to opposite parts of the city. But he could not see his friend from his place in the sky. In that very same minute of that very same hour, Pete was also up high, but in a different tower. There it is. What is this called? The Willis Tower. Larry's up there and Pete is at the John Hancock Center. That's right. Those are on opposite sides of the city. No help from a giant who had nothing to say, nor the strange-looking lady who pointed both ways. Look at that. That's right. That's a sculpture. It's a Picasso. It's some of the public art that's in the city. Do you think there's a lot of public art in a rural area? Meanwhile, Larry met a monster named Sue, saw beautiful paintings, old and new, then looked for Pete in huge tanks of deep blue. Oh, he was making his rounds to the museums. He was at the Field Museum seeing dinosaur bones. He was at the Art Institute. We did learn about that. Oh my goodness. Larry passed a round building but stayed far away. He heard people saying, that's where the bears play. He ran through a park filled with bright, shiny steel, past a crowd listening to music in a field. One sculpture looked like a bean a giant robot might eat. Larry saw his reflection, and beside it, that's right, that's another stadium in Chicago. Do you think that a rural area would have three stadiums? That's right, and he was in Millennium Park. He said he saw the bean, another sculpture. <gasps> it was Pete! They found each other at the bean. Oh, he saw so many great things in the city though. They jumped and they hugged. He wasn't lost anymore. Then Pete saw something they both could explore. Two giant faces smiled at them, blinking their eyes. Pete and Larry moved close and got a soaking surprise. They passed another fountain as they left this fun place, but this time kept their distance, just in case. That's right, look, they got sprayed with water. And there's Buckingham Fountain. They boarded a train and did their best to get dry and to this fabulous city said their goodbye. They are exhausted. And that's what we're doing. We're saying goodbye to this city and we are going to start learning about the rural areas where there's lots of land and farms and animals, the opposite of an urban area like Chicago. Do your jobs and I'll see you tomorrow.